Um, hello, I'm Michael Gracia, art director of Pronto Comics. I'm here with... How you doing? So, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do? Sure, uh, I, I've been writing and editing comics for 25, 26 years now. Uh, mostly humor comics and kids comics. Most of my work has been for Archie. I've done some stuff for DC, Dark Horse, and Arctic Press, Crack Magazine. I've been a, I've been around doing a bunch of different things for quite a while. Uh, running the gamut from everything from writing comic book stories to editing the stories to doing research for special projects uh, to putting together archive collection, you name it, uh, all types of things. Plus things like press releases, uh, all kinds of behind the scenes stuff. Okay, that sounds cool. Um, so let me, what, what got you into writing comics as opposed to writing something else? Uh, what got me into writing comics was wanting to draw comics. Uh, I went to the School of Visual Arts. Okay. I, made, I majored in animation and cartooning. And, uh, you know, while I was at the school, I learned a lot about storytelling. I learned a lot about visual storytelling, thinking visually. Uh, and I made sure to take some classes. Uh, that were literature based and creative writing based as well. And when I graduated, uh, something that some of my fellow classmates didn't do, which was I took a, a hard on look at my work and realized that I didn't really have the skills in perspective, anatomy, or composition that were going to get me, you know, hired over over my peers. There was just too many guys that were really skilled. And rather than try to compete with them, I decided, well, I really have, you know, a, a flair for and a love of storytelling. Let me try that. And I put together a, what I what I call a picture script portfolio. Uh, not storyboards per se, but I actually drew out comic scripts uh, in, in thumbnail form. And uh, I used that to get, to get writing work. That's you interesting. Know? And you said you work for Archie. Is that how you turn in your scripts to Archie? I used to. Uh, originally, when I first started writing scripts for Archie, they were all done as pencil scripts. Uh, same with DC. I had done some stuff uh, early on for uh, Boone Coons Magazine. It, it was a magazine back then, not a comic. Okay. Uh, and um, all that stuff, I drew it out. Uh, but eventually, I got away from that. And now, I, I do things more like a screenplay style. Okay. I, I'm just asking, because I remember... What was it? 2000, 2001. I worked for Archie for a few months as a production artist, and I saw some of the scripts that some people were sending in, and I remember seeing specifically, you know, like paneled out stories with little stick figures sometimes, or not really great drawings of Jughead, and you know those type of things. And I didn't know. I don't know if it was just you doing that, and if it was, I apologize. I don't want to insult your Jughead. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. At that point, I was probably way past the uh, picture script phase. Okay. When I was writing Archie's Rare Mysteries, uh, those stories were, were so, uh, by choice, uh, yeah. they, were, they were they had more depth to them in terms of what was going on. They were, I, I crammed those stories full of uh, all kinds of action and, and things, so I was, there was no way I was going to draw that. Yeah, th those are some... I read it by Fernando Ruiz and Aaron. Oh, Fernando was great. I remember working on some of those books. Yeah. Yeah, he turned them into gold. Yeah, he was great. Um, so let me ask you, what is the difference between writing a comic and writing something like, like I want to think of your working method. So when you're writing a comic, obviously you're thinking sequentially, but is there a difference in how you attack writing a comic as opposed to writing something else? I'm, I'm sorry, can you, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I you glitched for a second. Okay, yeah, sure. I, that must be why my head rose up. <laughs> my head, it, it rose up like it was really weird. Um, you know, comics, every medium is different. And so you have tools at your disposal in one medium that you don't have in another. Uh, the trickiest medium has got to be, you know, writing for film. And then after that would be, I guess, TV, but really film. Uh, film, you know, we take it for granted uh, when we write comics, we have caption boxes, we have thought balloons, uh, you know, which allow us to convey information and thoughts, inner thoughts, 
that he would get like in a novel, but he would never get that in a screenplay. Not part of a screenplay. Mm-hmm. Screenplay would be, you know, what's what's seen and heard in the screen, really. Uh, you know, occasionally someone will do a voiceover thing, but uh, it's encouraged to not um, show thoughts of characters. Yeah. So yeah, so the, the approach is, it's a hybrid. It's somewhere between a novel and a movie storyboard. It's really what it is. That's what a comic book is. And, and um, you know, you look at the Will Eisner, the great Will Eisner book, uh, Comics and Sequential Art. Mm-hmm. You know, he studied film. He studied all those from Marvel movies from the 40s. And, you know, he, he just um, realized there's a language here. Uh, and it, it's a little language. And so, yeah, if you're thinking visually when you write the comics, you know, first and foremost, but you also have to think about the characters. Mm-hmm. And uh, in my case, if you're writing humor, you want to get jokes in and you want to make, make them as organic as possible for the storyline. Uh, there's a very specific way of writing writing the comics uh, stories, especially when you're doing something like Archie, which is probably going to be one of your questions. <laughs> you want to ask the question? I'm sorry, what? You're probably going to ask me, well, how do you write for something yeah, like that? Yeah, that's what I was going to. That's what I was going to ask you. I'm, I'm very interested. I'm sorry, I just couldn't hear a little noise back here. But um, yeah, well, yeah, I'm very interested I'll, in that. I'll tell you this: this is not just really. This is not for Archie. This is for all writing. But um, looking at it from the standpoint of Archie is, is really a um, something that I think could be useful for many would-be writers out there, which is that you have to know your characters. You have to really know your characters, uh, who they are. Uh, how they feel about different things, um, what their status is in the world, what their hopes are, what they want to achieve. Different situations. Because that's the key. That's the key right there. I mean, if you have um, a story where Mr. Weatherby sleepwalks and he's wearing like a bathing suit with an inflatable... Uh, you know, rubber duck around his waist and he's walking through Riverdale, you know, every one of the kids is going to react differently or whatever the situation is. Yeah. They all have their unique personality. Yeah. Archetypes. You know, and it's it's true for any story, but in the best Archie stories, you really see it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jughead is always going to react differently. Jughead is, uh, I think a lot of people misconstrue Jughead who may only be familiar with him from the animated cartoons or have vague memories of him as in this goofball, but he's not really. He's he's really the smartest guy in Riverdale. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not book smart like Bill, but yeah. he's just wise. He kind of knows what's going to happen. He knows what to avoid, get mm-hmm. in trouble. He tries to warn Archie. Archie doesn't want to. You know, so he's going to react one way to a situation. Betty's going to react another way. Archie's going to react a different way. And mm-hmm. that's your story. If you know your characters and you come up with, or, or some kind of uh, you know premise that's going to move the action forward, your characters are going to write the rest of the story for you. Yeah, you already know how they're going to react. That's that that that's really good. I I was actually going to ask you uh, very soon if you can give some advice to writers, but that yeah. I think is probably one of the best pieces of advice that you can give. Um, Absolutely, you have to know your characters. Yeah. Um. Is there actually, well, we'll continue on this topic. Is there anything else you would tell an aspiring comic writer? Yeah, you, well, you always want to be thinking visually. You got to remember, you don't want to, you don't want it to be a talking heads type of uh, situation where every panel is people talking. You want to make sure you have action in there and interesting things for people to see, interesting visuals. Uh, it's good to get to know your artist if you're going to be working with an artist regularly mm-hmm. uh, because sometimes the best. The best stories are, are conferring with the artist. Hey, yeah, I'm kind of working on this idea, but I'm stuck here, um, and, and you have the visual know-how. What do you think would work here? You know, bounce ideas off of each other. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's always good to collaborate. Fernando Ruiz and I, uh, even though uh, I, I got really in-depth with my scripts, I would leave a lot of things up to him in the scripts. I would... I would like little notations. Uh, there was a, even a couple of scripts where I would let him just do whatever he wanted on a page because I knew he would just, you know, bring something special uh, to, to the story in progress. Okay. So I let him run with it, you know. So, okay. so I'd say get to know your, your 
your artist, uh, work with them, think visually, uh, try not to overuse uh, thought balloons or captions, use them sparingly. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, there are times when you can't get around it, you have to convey information. Yeah. So, yeah, use them, but use them sparingly. And uh, really, that's it. Try to have. have uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, can you repeat the last thing you said? I just got a little static. Sorry, um, I don't remember exactly what I was going to say, but I'll say this. A good rule of thumb uh, for making your stories interesting is what they call the, the start late, leave early rule. Okay. So you start in the middle of the action, something's already happening in progress, something crazy. And then you leave maybe with the main resolution, but maybe that's still unresolved. Okay. Your reader wants to come back for more. I, mean, I grew up reading, I was, I was a kid in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And um, I grew up reading Jerry Conway, Spider-Man Con. Uh, and his stories were great because month after month, they were self-contained in that you understood the, the clear beginning, middle, and end. But for subplots going on, little things happening in the background, he was planting seed. Yeah. And those seeds would become the main story, you know, two or three issues down the road. Interesting. Yeah. Brilliant. I mean, his, his stories were probably some of the greatest stories I ever read. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it always, always just kind of like start in the middle of the action, start with a bang, get people interested right away. Uh, keep, 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 a little bit of a mystery, but try to make it also satisfying and whole. Okay. It's a tight rope act. Yeah, no, I, I understand. Um, so you know what? I have I don't really have any other questions for you, but I would want to ask you: Do you have anything you want to promote? Websites, uh, events you're doing, or? Uh, boy, I'm, I am uh, marking tomorrow on my annual. Come my annual spring New York New Jersey tour. Okay. I got a bunch of dates. Um, if people want to look up where I'm going to be, I'll direct you to uh, my blog, which is for uh, this book I'm writing called Scared Silly. It's about old horror comedy movies. Uh huh. And if you go to that blog, it's um, scaredsilly.blogspot.com, and you'll be able to see the dates for that. Uh, one of the things that's up heavily on this tour is the same thought this came out came out last week I think it was last week, uh, called Rise Comics Against Bullying and it's an anthology book there's two issues I'm an issue number one okay. it's different writers and artists doing stories about about bullying against bullying okay. and proceeds uh, go towards organizations with anti-bullying initiatives Actually, so for that, I've got a cool story in there called Zoe Zombie, Zoe. and I've reunited with Chris Allen. I'm sorry, uh, who? Chris Allen. Okay. I've been heard for Archie for many years. Uh -huh. For a story, and uh, it just came out. So, I'm really proud of it, and happy with it. You know, it's up. Uh, well, so, uh, yeah, it's, hopefully it's uh, right there in the shop there. I'm, I'm, well, I don't know. I'll, I'll ask and see. I know, uh, yeah. I know I actually later... I know later we'll be um, interviewing uh, Dong Griffin, who's in that book as well. Yeah, so, okay, that's really, really cool. I'll definitely be looking out for it. I've seen the advertisements for it, and I do want to read it, so I will be looking out for it. Um, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Much right. appreciated. Yep, and, and uh, I'll, see you, I'll see you soon. I'm looking forward to the results of the 24-hour comic book challenge. Oh, so am I. Can't wait for it. Go for it, guys. Thank you. All right. Bye.